What's up everyone, my name is Terry, and today in my lab we are diving into how to use SharePoint with Power BI. Why are we going through this? Well, one, because it, you guys keep asking for it. And then number two, it's a very popular question. So let's dive into how to use SharePoint online with Power BI. The question on if you can use SharePoint with Power BI has increased pretty much in lockstep as the popularity of Microsoft Teams grew during COVID. As you may or may not know, the back end mechanisms for file storage and security of Microsoft Teams is SharePoint. Every Microsoft Team is really just a SharePoint site with a SharePoint group to go along with it. As more and more people kept storing data inside of the files tab in Teams or using solutions built off of Microsoft slash SharePoint lists, the larger the request to try and get that data into a dashboard in Power BI. There are two ways to use SharePoint directly with Power BI. The first one is to use a SharePoint or Microsoft list. And then the second one is to open a Excel or CSV file from the document library or files tab, depending upon which way you're looking at it. Let's switch over to the computer and dive into it. I don't have a SharePoint list available, so let's go make one quickly, just in case you've never done it. Uh, I have this team created here in Teams here that's just a marketing placeholder for some of the affiliate marketing stuff that I do. So let's create a list real quick to do that from the Teams side, which is a little bit easier than the SharePoint online side, but it's all the same in the end. Click on this plus sign and go, which opens up the apps menu here, which is more organized than it used to be. And you just search for lists and it pops right up there. And then we can click on save and you can rename this button here if you would like. Otherwise, you can just jump right into uh, either creating a list or if you already had one that you made through the web version, you could embed it here if that's what you're looking to do. But I don't. So let's create a new list. And since we'll be using a Excel file as our basis from this, you could just cheat and do from Excel here. But I'll show you the manual way how to do it just in case you need to do it for uh, whatever reason. Power BI demo list. Same. Oh, that A is funny. All right. Green because why not? And coffee because why not create? So as you can see, we have a empty list here. Step one will be to create all your columns and then step two is to copy all of your data in. I find this a little bit easier to do in the web browser. So you can just click on the three dots here and do SharePoint or open in SharePoint, which same thing, just the web version of it. And we'll need this URL here once we get to Power BI in a minute anyways. So let's pull up the spreadsheet. Right here we have that eight columns that we need to create. All right, let's go through first left to right and just make some new columns. As you go, you can be mindful of the type of data that's in each column. So for instance, if it is a numbers column, you can create a numbers column and then that way you don't need to do that step in Power BI as you are editing that data type. But worst case, if you just leave it all as text, you can always convert it in Power BI once it's in there. And I'll go through and just create the rest of these. Speed it up so you don't have to watch me. Typo column names. If you take a look at our spreadsheet here. You can see we got 300 and some items. This is just one of the tabs in the example data from Microsoft, but would be very common if you ran any type of web store to have a SKU sheet like this. To get this into our list, the easy way is to do edit and grid view. And essentially we're just going to copy all of the data and bring it in here. So just as an example with the first one, we can click and drag here. So we have the whole row highlighted and then hit just paste in the data and you might say doing uh, 300 of these one by one is terrible, which I agree. So now that you see what, what we're going to do, 
You just go and skip the first one since it's already there. Go all the way down to the bottom. Oh, my bad, it's almost 400. Same difference. So those are copied over there and on here. And see, it is creating each one. So as you see this going down here, this little circle for each one is SharePoint writing the data to the underlying database for the list. So uh, basically you just let this go down. It's gonna go down the entire piece of here. Um, from my personal experience, if you're pasting in a lot of data, keep it into batches of at least under a thousand. Like in prep for this video, I did 700 and it was fine but a little shaky in the middle so ideally less than 500 but just make sure you batch it a little bit if it's a lot of lines you know you're pretty safe on the sharepoint views list as long as it's under a hundred thousand total but just from workability in this grid view if you can keep in batches of less than 500 items for each one as you're staging all this stuff here, you, you should be fine. Just as an FYI for what I did there, I did make the standard cost and the list price for each one a numbers column too. So when we bring it into Power BI in a moment here, it should pick it up as a integer column and not a string column like the rest of them. And movie magic, I'm going to skip to the end here because even though this is going quickly, watching this is about as fun as watching paint dry. A few moments later. We are almost done with this import. Now the, we have them, all the items in here. We can just click on exit grid view. And we see that they are all in here. So now we can close our spreadsheet because we no longer need it to make this list. And just for reference, in our pinned in list as well, it's all here. How do we get this into Power BI? Well, I'm just gonna go up here and grab, grab the URL, because we're gonna need that in a second. So it's I'm right here. And in Power BI, you can just click on get data. You can scroll up and down on this one here, but you just go SharePoint, bring it to the short list. And we'll want SharePoint online list. Paste in the URL, because it's gonna basically scan the site and detect all the lists and you just pick which one. Um, I always do 2.0 for newer stuff. If you have multiple views, you can you know, skew it a little bit, but we're not that fancy here. And you see, you know, behind the scenes, SharePoint has extra lists that it uses for site assets and all that, but we named this Power BI Demo List. So if we click on it, it'll give a little preview of everything. Check box it. Uh, I was always taught to preview your data first, but if you're confident this is good, you can just click on Load. Uh, just as expected, as I mentioned earlier about creating columns, you can see the list price here and the standard cost is set as a number column uh, versus everything else is set as string. Yeah, again, if you needed to switch it at this point, that's totally fine too. If you didn't, if you just specified text for every column in SharePoint Online, and then beyond that. Uh, there's a lot of extra columns that are behind the scenes on SharePoint that you don't see unless you're actually using them like this compliance asset ID. If you want, you can remove that, but the version number most likely you can get rid of. Same with attachments, edit type, item child count. You know, all of this stuff here to the right is just extra default SharePoint that comes along with any list. So you can literally just select it all and then remove columns and close and append. So I brought in 400 rows and I want to use it. They're all here on the right side. Otherwise, here's the much 
shorter list, you know, with all the other ones that we chopped out. And then any updates to this list, you don't have to do that step anymore. Using SharePoint lists is good for static data or if you're already using solutions that are built off of SharePoint lists. So for example, if you're using a ticketing system that's built off of SharePoint lists or an expense list or an issues list, all those items that if you're collecting the right data, you can turn into a report on frequency or how many tickets are being opened by a person and visually see that data and get more out of it. Now let's switch over to how to use Excel files or CSV files stored in SharePoint inside Power BI. Quick reset of Power BI here, and now let's go through how to get an Excel file that's stored in a document library or the files tab into Power BI. For starters, we've got Power BI right here, and then if I go back to Teams and go to Files, uh, that Excel file we were using is stored right here, and you can see right on this files tab here, I have folders storing some affiliate marketing stuff that I created for other things. Quick little uh, surprise that we'll find here in a moment is that these files don't actually exist. This is just for us as we're going through the web view of it because all of this is actually stored in a SQL database underneath the scenes. So a uh, quick little pro tip on this, if you're using a team to store all of this information, go and edit that file first. So then you can sort it by last modified and easily find it. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. All right, so get data. Oh, we'll again, search for SharePoint. Do SharePoint folder, which is funny considering everything I just said. And same as before, the site URL, not the full path, just the site. It's gonna scan for all the dot. Uh, document libraries and give them to you as an option. So as you can see here, we got lots of files here, and this is one you're going to definitely want to transform because in this case here, there's a lot of stuff we don't need. So, there we go. As you can see, we have lots of files and our Here's our Excel file here. It's not that long where I couldn't just scroll down, but let's just say this is a active team with many people involved, lots of files, multiple years old. If you go and edit the Excel file or it's the last file that's added, you can sort it by date modified and it'll be the first one here. All right, now that we have the Excel sheet as the top one, easily found it, right click on it and do add as new query because so for any future changes we just need this one item here we can double click on it and that excel file had multiple tables in it so we will select sales order table and we can see that here is the sales orders that we could link into the other tables and we will do use first row as header headers to clean it up. And then at this point, you can either kind of repeat the process if you want to bring in multiple tables all at once or, and then once you're done, what you can do is uh, delete the first query. So then you're not querying every item that's in that document library for any refreshes in the Power BI uh, refresh cycle. And you hit save and close. We got that table in here, sales order, order line. And then taking a quick look at it, we have sales order line key and the order. So these would, you know, if you're going through the example provided by Microsoft, these map to the other tables, and then you could go and build the entire Power BI dashboard. But this is how you get a Excel file inside of Power BI. Couple quick points before we wrap this video up here. This isn't supposed to be a master video on the best practices of SharePoint. So these are just kind of general reminders if you're new to SharePoint Online or Power BI and or both. Uh, first and foremost, if you're already using SQL Server to hold this data, nine times out of 10, you probably can't just directly move that to SharePoint in its entirety. And SharePoint has lots of 
limits on item counts and lists and user operability. Basically, SharePoint itself is kind of a database inside of a database, so it's not really meant to be another database mixed into that. If you're looking to just try and get off of, you know, SQL Server on prem to hold this data, you know, there's SQL and Azure, and there's also Microsoft Dataverse as both database options to have cloud based data if you're looking for a secondary reporting location or something like that, or uh, consult your other cloud options to move that line of business app that's generating all this data to the cloud as well. I will leave a link to all the SharePoint limitations below because there is. Lots of pros and cons when it comes to item counts and list views and things along those natures. Uh, just keep those in mind because if you have to interact with this data, then uh, once you start crossing those thresholds, it gets more difficult to work with that data. Along with that, though, if the flip side of that one's true, if you're already using the solutions like some of the templated options from Microsoft Lists, then it's probably 100% safe to use inside Power BI to get. Uh, more information out of the data you already have. Along with that, uh, the next piece of this they may or may not be logically answering here is, you know, long term, how do you keep this data up to date or how do you get new data to go on top of this here if it's not a SharePoint solution right off the bat? Like if you exported something out of a line of business app or if you get a daily report, how do you get that daily ad additional information into? these reports. Uh, the answer to that is Power Automate. And if you guys are interested in seeing how to do that, leave me a comment down below asking on to create a video on automating that type of stuff or any other questions related to this solution. Thank you for watching this video. Just as a quick recap here, this is what we went through. First, we made a new SharePoint slash Microsoft list and then brought that into Power BI. Then we went and grabbed an Excel file outside of a document library or a the files tab in Microsoft Teams and brought that into Power BI. Then lastly, we went over some high level do's and don'ts with SharePoint Online, just in case you're new to that platform as well. As previously mentioned, links to everything I mentioned during this video is down below in the description, along with other ways to support the channel and all of our social media contacts as well. While you're down there, please consider giving this video a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing. And before we go, my name is Terry, this is my lab, and until next time, keep building.